Hello and welcome. You're watching our speak here on Bloomberg Quint. I am Agam Makil and with me is Alex Matthew. Good afternoon, Alex. Good afternoon, Agam. Well, uh, big cuts in the benchmark indices today. Stock markets in line with our global peers are down. We'll tell you all about that at the start of this program. But if you've got specific queries about stocks, then you can send them to us on all our social media platforms on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube and WhatsApp. You can also call us on 022 or you can mail us on askpq at bloombergquint.com. Only make sure to add the askpq hashtag. At the start today, we were talking about the fact that global equities were weak, the queues were bad. Perhaps we're a little less uh, worse off than uh, some of the Asian peers that are down 3% and 2%. That is true, Alex. But, uh, well, uh, you know, the, the selling pressure is a lot more in uh, the broader markets in Indian mm. equities as compared to some of your... Uh, you know, the leading indices. So, but we do have one percent cut for both the Sensex and the Nifty. The banking index also falling in tandem with the, the benchmarks. Uh, what stood out over the previous few days was, of course, the the banks leading the gains, and today it is essentially the banks which are leading the losses. All constituents of the Nifty banking uh, index are in the red at this point in time. So, there certainly is a lot of weakness there. And uh, when it comes to your broader markets, uh, such as your mid cap and the small cap indices, again. They are mostly falling in line with uh, the way the Sensex and the Nifty have, have been moving. But in terms of gainers and losers on the indices, we do have Indian, well, in fact, uh, two OMCs standing out in trade with the Indian Oil Corp and uh, HPCL advancing by around a little over 1.5 to 2%. NTPC continues to build on the gains that we saw. Uh, last Friday up 1% and uh, Power Grid, Dr. Reddy's and ONGC among others. But it is the losers which is going to have a lot more coming through. So Z Entertainment down 2.84%, Vedanta and UPL also down by around 25 to 2.7%. And among other losers on the Nifty, which are also dragging the indices downwards, we have, well, two metal companies, Hindalco and JSW Steel, reeling under pressure with Bharti Infratel, not too far behind, down around 1.3%. So uh, there certainly are a lot of cuts coming through. And uh, once again, we're going to have to wait and watch whether or not this is just a pause before the up move re resumes, or is this to do with uh, something larger? coming through. Absolutely. But also watch out for the for the bond markets because uh, globally that has been a focus. Uh, on, on Friday you had uh, the inversion of the yield curve in the United States and uh, the world over bond yields have uh, been affected. Not so much I think in the Indian market. 7.31% uh, is where it currently stands. That's the 10-year benchmark. Let's get uh, two experts of the day in. Jignesh Mehta of Kiran Jadav com and Partif Shah of Trackom Stockbrokers. They're both here to answer all of your questions today. Uh, right at the top of the show, um, I think this is a question for you, Partif. Would you consider Power Finance Corporation a good buy at the current level? Let's pull up the chart and see where it's currently trading. Arun Kumar is wondering whether he should buy in to PFC, which is up 6.3% in trade today at 120 See, frankly, we are not uh, big fans of uh, any government-run NBFCs and especially when we know for the fact that those NBFCs cater to only uh, one sector, which is the power and uh, discount related sectors. Uh, because we know what sort of uncertainties in these uh, many of these government-run businesses have in the longer horizon. And there's a key reason why these companies always trade uh, at a huge discount to their price to book multiples. Not all at times, they have very good dividend yields. But, you know, historically, they have not been really very rewarding in terms of for the principal appreciation. So uh, we have a clear-cut strategy like uh, for investments in NBFC. It's better go in for a well-diversified business model uh, sort of an NBFC, which is uh, privately run. And I think if I were to cite some names, uh, we are very comfortable suggesting l and Financial Holding at current juncture. And on any declines, I think something like a Bajaj Finance, uh, I think that would also be a good bit. Okay, uh, well, uh, that's your view on well, PFC specifically, but let's move on and take Vignesh's question on YouTube, and he wants a technical view on HDFC Life. He says, shall I buy now or wait for some more correction? Uh, let's take a look at HDFC Life. Uh, it's a clear technical view, so I'll take this up with Jignesh. It's currently at 356, so a little bit of a correction has seeped back into this particular stock. Jignesh, how are you viewing trade on this one? Uh, Vignesh wants to buy, but uh, should he buy these levels or should he wait? 
I think uh, by looking at the chart, it does not make sense to buy this counter just because it is forming lower tops and lower bottoms. Not only that, uh, currently this counter is trading at its uh, support juncture, which has been there uh, from last around one year. I think a crackdown from any of these levels will take uh, stocks further down. So I don't suggest uh, to go and uh, buy for HDFC Life. Uh, I would rather recommend him to go for HDFC or rather HDFC Bank. Uh, uh, for that matter, but at least avoid uh, HDFC life at current levels. All right, there was a bro brokerage report perhaps uh, leading to some of the uh, sell-off that you see. Uh, oh, there was a, a revision in the target price downwards, but uh, that same major brokerage firm talks about, the Morgan Stanley report of course talks about uh, the target price reducing to 380 from 425. That might just be the latest trigger. Uh, of course, there's weakness across the board, as Agam pointed out. Uh, let's take uh, another question from YouTube. Um, we've got uh, uh, Ayush Gupta, who's asking about Birla Soft. Let's pull up the chart and see what it's currently trading, um, just to get a sense as to where it is currently. And 95 rupees or thereabouts. Uh, he's asking for a long-term view. Uh, Parthiv, do you have coverage on this counter? And if so, would you recommend a buy? Uh, I'm sorry, which company you Birla Soft. Uh, which yes. earlier used to be known as KBIT. Yes, absolutely. I think we know for the fact that uh, there was a merger of sorts between uh, KPIT and uh, the Birla Soft uh, Group, uh, wherein I think they merged the engineering vertical and also separately the software vertical. But uh, very frankly speaking, I think we are still skeptical in terms of what sort of synergies would inculcate. And generally, such mergers do take a lot of time uh, in terms of uh, you know the client synergies and also a lot of cost synergies to pan out. So it's better to go in with I think uh, the frontline IT names in IT sector as such there could be some turbulent times with you know the data points coming in weak from the developed markets so it's better to go with something like HCL technologies where I think there's a lot more valuation comfort and uh, they have had some inorganic growth strategies going ahead so I think HCL technologies would be a more preferred name. Okay well uh, the preference here as Parthiv has pointed out that he prefers HCL technologies over Birla Soft uh, but uh, let's move on and take uh, well one more short term query we have uh, a question from Mulashri, and it's on IDFC First Bank. Actually, Mulashri has two uh, two queries: IDFC First Bank as well as uh, Sadbhav Engineering. So we'll take a technical view here. Let's start with IDFC First. Let's take a look at where that one is trading. It's currently at around 51.7. Uh, we do get a lot of questions on IDFC First. Um, Jignesh, let's start with IDFC First. Uh, what is your view here? Well, IDFC first uh, is an uh, interesting chart uh, because it has formed an uh, inverted head and shoulder pattern. Whenever such a pattern forms after a downtrend, it is a bullish sign. Uh, I think uh, uh, the right shoulder of this uh, of this pattern also has a lot of volume in it. So I suggest uh, it's an interesting chart, can be bought at current levels. Uh, 51, 52 is something uh, that is going around currently. So viewer can go ahead and buy this counter at current levels uh, with a stop loss of 47. Uh, which is three, uh, three rupees, four rupees away from current levels. And the viewer can at least expect a target of 65, 64 uh, within two, three months down the line because uh, the formation of this uh, uh, of this chart is around three to four months in inverted head and shoulder. So this should be uh, uh, so this should be the target for the viewer. And the other question was on Sadhbhav Engineering, again for the short term. Let's pull up Sadhbhav Engineering as well. If we can also actually take a look at what it's done over the last one month or three months. It's currently at around 252. One month, it's up of as much as 45%. So clearly uh, in the swing here. And um, okay, so it's at 252. Uh, Jignesh, clearly a lot of strength in this one. Uh, you reckon there's more legs to this rally? Uh, somehow I cannot pull up this chart, so I am not be I will not be able to uh, comment on this. Okay, currently. okay, okay. No worries, Jignesh. Okay, uh, all right. Let's uh, move to another one. In fact, uh, uh, we've got a couple of viewers who are asking about uh, Ashok Leland, which is also uh, which also happens to be one of the favorites uh, on this particular program. At least uh, stock is currently trading about two percent lower at eighty-seven eighty. We've got Abhijit uh, Kamaru on YouTube who's asking for a long-term view on Ashok Leland and we've got a short-term query from Raveen Pai on Facebook 
Ravin has bought Ashok Leyland at 92 and he's bought about 500 shares. He's wondering what the short-term outlook it is, considering the latest updates uh, with regard to production. Um, Parthiv, if we're talking about pain in the space, uh, there's a lot of commentary that has uh, come in over the last couple of months, considering the kind of production cuts that you've seen across the auto industry. Uh, would you be wary of the space, and in particular uh, in Ashok Leyland, and avoid and wait and watch for a few months at least? Yes, I firmly believe that a wait and watch approach would be better at this juncture. No doubt, long term prospects are very good for this industry and Ashok Leland in particular. But our sense is that you know there is a good chance of further correction, and there are still inventories building up, and there is not much of an offtake uh, going on. And especially many of the projects, I think, will again get kick started post the elections. So I think uh, the next two to three months could be challenging for these players, and we might see some sort of further derating in the stock. So I think there's a key reason why we suggest a wait and watch approach and then I think uh, within the next three months we'll get better entry points for long term investors to enter into stocks like Ashok Leland. Okay, uh, let's move on and talk about Sterlite Technologies, another stock which has been getting a lot of mentions of late in our shows. Uh, we need a technical view here for Sterlite Technologies. We have Abhinash Pradhan who wants a short term view currently at 218. Um, Jignesh, it's been in the news as well of late. How would you trade Starlight Technologies? Uh, well, uh, Starlight Technology doesn't have a, uh, a good momentum or at least a, a negative momentum currently. But the way the stock has rallied from the similar kind of levels uh, in a previous uh, previously uh, in the February month, I guess uh, currently stock has a strong support at 209 levels. So viewers should at least, uh, uh, if he has a short term view, he should at least keep uh, 209 as a stop loss in mind and can hold this counter. I think the way stock has uh, performed uh, last time from the two, 209 levels, it should again do the same thing and at least can go to 240. So 240 is the target, 209 uh, should be the stop loss. Okay, we've got a question uh, which I think uh, Agam addressed right at the start of the program. Uh, Suman Saha is wondering why Axis Bank is down. I think uh, Agam mentioned that the entire banking pack is under pressure. Uh, the stock is down there for about 1.4%. But if you pull up the longer term charts of Axis Bank, you will notice that along with its other, a couple of its other private sector peers, it has done particularly well uh, in the recent past, up in the last 12 months as much as 50%. Uh, but I think that would be a good uh, opportunity to go to Parthiv on this one. Axis Bank, uh, do the valuations at this level, uh, you know, are you comfortable with them? And would you recommend a fresh entry into Axis, maybe ICICI? See, no doubt, I think uh, we've uh, liked uh, both these uh, corporate sector lenders and no doubt, uh, I think it's hard to uh, give them a name tag as corporate sector lenders because they've also built a sizable chunk of retail lending book. Both of them are like turnaround stories and expected to do extremely well going ahead. Over the next three years, we expect, I think, the return ratios and the results to pan out extremely well for them with uh, uh, less deterioration in the asset quality and rather a lot of recoveries and improvement. Uh, but currently, I think, based on the current valuations, the trail multiples, I think we still feel there is more leg for someone like ICC Bank, which is still, I think, uh, cheap in terms of valuations vis a vis excess bank. There's a valuation gap of around 20%. So, my bad is more towards ICIC Bank, but nonetheless, if one has three to five horizon, even Excess Bank can do very good in front support. Okay, well, um, let's move on and talk about Hindustan Unilever in the short term. We have a question from Janali Jaya Durga Devi. Um, well, it continues to weaken actually, and I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, HUL's market cap has now once again lost out to that of ITCs. Uh, the short term view is what we require right now. Jignesh, we've seen some weakness come through off late, but uh, is this weakness here to stay? I think so, yeah. Um, uh, weakness is uh, going to stay here just because the way stock has brutally. Uh, breached its 200-day moving average, and that has happened twice uh, uh, in last around four months. So this time, I think uh, uh, this line uh, breaking uh, breaking below this line uh, is an important uh, suggestion. I think 1700 is now going to act as a very important resistance for HUL. I don't think HUL is ready to move uh, above 1700 uh, in short in short term. 
So uh, this is an opportunity to create uh, shorts in the counter and uh, stock can at least taste around 1600 levels uh, downside. Okay, we did uh, get one query on Sadhav, uh, I think from Moolashree earlier in the program, and we couldn't get a technical view. Hopefully, uh, Parthiv, you'll be able to talk about, if I look at the one-year chart uh, of this count, I see that it's corrected from levels of as high as 400, uh, or gone all the way down to 161. And uh, in the last couple of months or so, you've seen a sharp recovery, and it's now trading around 250. So we've got Bhavesh Jain, who has invested in Sadbhav Engineering at levels of 370. So he's still waiting to recover his uh, cost price here, 300 shares. He's asking if he should hold on if there are more legs in this current rally that we're seeing. See, certainly what I believe is that Sadbhav Engineering is extremely well-paced, has around a decent order book uh, to take care of the next two, two and a half years. Uh, and also, I think uh, balance sheet-wise, it's a very strong company and there is a good chance that its subsidiary Sadbhav Infra Projects Limited, uh, once they monetize their road projects, uh, Sadbhav Engineering would land up uh, getting some uh, money from that and I think they would be able to become a debt-free company. So, going is good and I think uh, if one has two to three-year horizon, uh, this can be an interesting Company to hold on. All right. Uh, well, let's move on and then talk about Bharat Gears and Petronet LNG. We have a question from Gaurav Jaggi. Now, he hasn't really mentioned um, if it's for the fundamentals or technical. So, Pathi, let me come back to you on both these stocks Bharat Gears and Petronet LNG. How are you viewing them? Okay. I think it's an auto installation based company and uh, our sense is that it's better to not purchase is any auto ancillary companies at this juncture, especially when the entire automobile industry is kind of struggling. And uh, I think we'll get better entry points, so it's better to avoid that counter right now. And which was the second stock? The second one was Petronet LNG. Okay. See, uh, in case of Petronet LNG, uh, it's a good company fundamentally and there are big prospects for this company to supply uh, LPG uh, and I think more importantly I think uh, they have these gasified terminals uh, which are there in Dahej and Kochi and I think they have plans to expand the capacity but again I think the stock has been uh, moving in a narrow range since a very very long time so we are quite hopeful that over the next three years once the expansion plans fructify and they land up getting more gas from uh, Gales pipeline I think uh, the business model will look more interesting and also the return ratios will better. So hold it for our next two to three of us. All right. Uh, we've got a question from Maninder Kurana. Let's pull up uh, DHFL, a much talked about stock in the recent past. Uh, uh, of course, uh, Maninder is referring to the latest update that we got uh, uh, about the crystal downgrade of, the comp of this uh, company's commercial papers, 850 crores worth of commercial papers have been downgraded. Um, and in fact, the outlook is also negative. So I'll come back to you, Parthiv, on a counter like DHFL. And I, I think I recently read another brokerage report that spoke, or a rating agency report that spoke about uh, more pain to come in the HFC space uh, in FY20 as well. How would you look at DHFL considering the kind of battering that it's taken uh, if you're a retail investor already holding or if you're contemplating buying at these levels? See, very frankly speaking, I think in DHFL's case, I think uh, most of the negative news are already there and out in the market. And now if the rating agency comes in so late to downgrade uh, the ratings, I think I don't think so. It will really matter much. But uh, it's going to get difficult for such tainted companies to raise funds, uh, which is, I think, the key raw material for growing the business, which they've been able to do it in the past. But now will be the key test uh, with uh, such ratings and also uh, with the difficult times they face. So it's better to avoid these counters because I think in NBFC's case, unlike a bank, I think any sort of issues to raise funds really uh, makes the business model go haywire. So as I mentioned at the start of the show, that in NBFC's, if one wants to go, I think it's better to go with such quality names, names like LNT Financial Holding or an Edelweiss Financial or like Bajaj Finance uh, on any declines. I think those are better names to go on for long term. Okay, well, uh, let's move on and talk about uh, Tata LC. We want a short-term view, a technical view of on Tata LC from Saivikas Gupta. It's on YouTube. He holds it at 1,002 and he wants to know if he should hold or exit. Let's also take a look at where it is. Currently at 966. Uh, it was well, at 1,000 rupees per share just uh, you know, a few weeks ago. 
But uh, Jignesh, your view, do you think the, these shares should be held or let go of? I think uh, it should rather let go of just because the thousand level is acting as an important resistance counter has not seen uh, uh, not seen any close above uh, thousand. Although it went once in uh, in the intraday trade, uh, but it hasn't uh, seen uh, one thousand levels. Already counter was in uh, downtrend, so I suggest exit out of this uh, out of this idea. Okay, Patif, coming to you, uh, we've already addressed IDFC First Bank. So Nayan Paul, uh, half of your question has been answered. Uh, Nen is asking about future consumer with a perspective of three years. Nen has already bought, in fact, uh, 130 shares at just about 47, which is not too far from the current market price, even though the stock is down about 1% in trade today. Uh, should Nen hold on, therefore, for the next three years? And what is the outlook according to you? See, very frankly, I think this company always brings with it a lot of prospects in terms of the scale and in terms of improvements. But I think when the numbers come out, I think still it is kind of struggling as compared to many of the uh, consumer-centric uh, FMCG players. So I think I would avoid this counter. And if one has a three-year horizon, we are far more comfortable uh, parking money in something like a Marico, with the stories panning out to be extremely well, with the Cupra prices also being down, and they're spending additionally uh, to grow their volumes. Okay, uh, Partha, we have one more for you. Well, HDFC EMC also have, was one of the stellar listings that we had of late, but uh, um, we have Shorya Bajaj who wants a long-term view. So would you recommend anyone buying HDFC EMC at these rates? Uh, yes, I do. I think it's a fantastic business model and uh, wherein I think the fixed assets are at 37, 40 crores and this is a company which generates a huge amount of free cash flows and uh, pat of around 800 crores and we are quite confident despite the fact that there was big reduction in the TERs and most of which they have passed on to the distributors so they will not be taking such a huge hit and I think uh, they have kind of capitalized on the uh, problems in the debt funds because I think as a trusted brand a lot of more money has uh, went into their debt fund kitty and even the liquid fund kitty but nonetheless i think going ahead uh, this uh, is this industry which is growing and even at this juncture the AUM, overall aum as a percent of gdp is quite minuscule low which can easily double down in the next uh, three to five years so that's where hdfc amc should do well and definitely if one has a three to five horizon they are bullish on this counter okay uh, let's pull up uh, au small finance bank uh, it's down about 10.9 percent for the year it's been uh, pretty volatile if you pull up the long term chart, the one year chart, uh, I want to just very quickly get uh, a view from Partev on this counter. We've got Dhawal Parekh who's uh, invested at levels of 638 and since then the stock is corrected uh, and it's currently trading just around the 550 mark. Are you really convinced uh, with regard to the, the business model that this company has um, and in terms of the long term prospects of uh, uh, you know their play in financial inclusion and uh, everything that they were set out to do? Certainly, I think EU Small Finance Bank has done a fantastic job in developing this secured book wherein I think uh, the quality of the book is very good, the spreads and the yields on advances are very good. Uh, they are, they have done a good job even in their liability side of the franchisee and I think uh, they can certainly grow the business extremely well and from this current base, uh, they aspire to grow uh, their uh, book by almost 25-30% uh, and I believe they will be in a position to do so. There is a lot of uh, growth opportunity in the segments that they are operating into and the profits that they are into. So certainly I think if one has a long term horizon, a small financial bank should be a good one. Okay guys, uh, uh, we move into the rapid fire segment. But before we do that, I request your experts to keep your answers as short as possible. And the first one is a technical view on HPCL. We want a one month and a six month view. The question is from Prasad. Uh, Jignesh, over to you. How are you viewing HPCL? HPCL is a buy recommendation uh, already broken out of the channel. 255 should be the stop loss and 310 should be the target. Okay, uh, Partiv, Red Devil wants to know a fundamental view on Bandhan Bank and Radico Kaitan. Would you recommend buys in these two counters? Uh, Bandhan Bank, yes, if one is a 3 to 5 horizon. And Radico Kaitan, I think I would prefer United Spirits. Okay, Parthiv, one more question from Raj Shah. He wants a view on high-tech gears and Kirloskar Ferris. Do you track any of these? Uh, Kirloskar Ferris, I do track. Uh, I think the outlook is not very rosy for the pick-and players. And I think it's better to avoid this count. 
the next one's for you again, uh, Parthiv. Vivek Kanojia wants to know, uh, he's holding uh, RBL Bank at levels of 512. Uh, should he add more at the current levels, which is 630 or thereabouts? Better to add on this, but do hold on to your current positions. All right, another short-term view on Aurobindo Pharma with a six-month view in mind. Uh, this one is for you, Jignesh. Uh, well, for six months, uh, uh, Aurobindo Pharma can be held with a stop loss of 740 uh, with, a, uh, with a target of 830. Missed that last one. What is the target on Aurobindo? 830. 830. Okay, we've got a short-term query again for you. This one from Ujwal Kumar. Uh, Reliance Industries, target for the short-term and stop loss. Well, for the short term, Reliance has a negative momentum. So I think it will go below uh, 1300, around 1280 some levels. And from there, it is going to be a buy pick, but currently in a negative momentum. Okay, I think we can squeeze in one more. Parthiv Harsh wants to know if Coal India can go back to around 220, 230, uh, and can it sustain? Actually, it's already at 230. But can it see a further correction from these levels based on the kind of dividends uh, that we've seen and uh, the prospects of the company? See, certainly the downside seems to be limited, but I think upside would take some time. So, but yes, there's a possibility it can test levels of 250, 260 in some time. All right, that, uh, that is all the time that we have on this particular edition of Ask BQ. I'd like to thank both our guests. Thank you so much, Shiknesh and Parthiv, for helping our viewers today with all the questions that you did answer. And that is all that we have on this edition of Ask PQ. Up next is Power Lunch.